Hi guys, okay, it's Blackie, and today we're going to be talking about the new Blackbird 2 Habersack. Now, this was the Blackbird 1 Habersack that you've seen me carrying and in my, all my videos and stuff like that for the last year and a half, maybe two years now. And it's been a really good design. It was something I'd come up with over a long time of carrying a haversack of little bells and whistles. Well, I've got nearly 500 bags that have been sold. And people like you have given me some feedback on it. And so I want to incorporate some of that feedback into the design to update the design a little bit and make it even better. And so that's what the Blackbird 2 is, is just an update on the design, adding a few extra bells and whistles and doing it slightly differently, okay? This is Blackbird 2. Now, this is going to be made out of ripstop uh, canvas. It's waterproofed and it's ripstop, okay? The ripstop material, as you know, and I think you can see that, you probably can't, there's a fine little grid pattern on it. And what that allows is if you get a tear, just like ripstop, poplin, or whatever, it goes till it hits that tougher thread and it stops. And so that makes it easier to repair, easier to keep up in the field, where you won't get a little spare and it's just going to rip wide open, which these are tough, thick canvas anyway. But it's just another little layer of protection. We changed the strap and went from the folded over strap to a woven strap with a sewed on cover. And we will get into that in a second. It comes around the shoulder and then we reduce it down to a given size and then it goes to the buckles. Now on the original Blackbird one, it had two brass buckles. We've gone with two steel, anodized steel buckles there. These are the same buckles used on the military packs that the US military has. So even if you were the anodizing off, they're not gonna rust. They do, it'll be very, very minor. This is not something that's gonna give up, give out easily. It'll be there forever. And putting this strap in and out a lot, you're gonna put a lot of wear. So it's gonna hold up. Next, the back, uh, let me show you on the other one. Because this is actually a prototype. And this is a prototype. We went, up here at the top where before it was just a sewed handle now it's a sewed and it's got this reinforcing ridge that's also a carry handle a quick grab handle so i can reach and grab and pick it up like this to carry my haversack this also makes it other uses and we'll get into that in just a second now don't get excited on this one this one's got a zipper on the outside we're not going with this it will be like that one which will have the zipper on the inside, okay? The flap has been made a little bit bigger, give you a little more internal room. And the where the pucker is up here, because on mine, it comes all the way up here at the top, so that when it folds over, you can see the fold points right there. It folds over the top of the bag, so your small things that you've got in your haversack don't fall out. And I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing anybody else's product, but I've seen a lot, because I carried these in living history for 25 years. You always had a haversack. I made my own. I bought haversacks from people, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the most common problems I had with it was you'd look at the side of it, and it'd come up and it'd stop like right there, and there's like a two-inch gap before the flap. And you would sit the haversack down and little things would find their way out of that gap. It just seemed like magic. I don't know how many times I lost a flint and steel or lost some small piece of gear that I'd stick on top when I, you know, got my stuff and I'd put it back. And then when I laid the bag down, it fell over or whatever. It'd come out from under that flap. I wanted to fix that. And so with this, the, the bag material comes all the way to the top and then is actually folded over. So the weight of the flap is actually kinking as you can probably see right there, it's actually kinking it, so the bag is closed. Nothing's coming out of it unless you just turn it upside down and shake it. It's going to stay in there. Now, on the back, we have the grab handle, as I said. And then down here at the bottom, we've gone now to where you've got a great big three tie points. Okay, you can tie a bedroll under here. You can do several different things. And I'm going to do some demonstration in a second of what these loops can be utilized for. Okay, 
and we've got the handle up here. Now, the strap is now the woven, and then it's had sewed on top the covering to carry the saw blade. We're going to demonstrate that in just a second. All in all, it's the same bag with just some improvements to it. Okay. So now let me show you some of those improvements right quick. And let's start with that grab handle, what all it can be used for. Okay, taking my grab handle, and I'm taking, these are two Alice clips. They were used for U.S. military Alice gear. There are tons of these available in surplus. If you've got an old army canteen or something, this is probably on the back of it, okay? They just slide in and out of a slot. So I'm just going to hook them on that handle right quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hook it to my belt that way. Okay, now that I've got it hanging on the belt, I'm going to take my shoulder strap, I'm going to run it around my hip, come around to this side, run it back through those two rings, and anchor it this way. Now what this does is it allows me to carry my haversack as a thigh bag whenever I'm carrying a rucksack or something like that. Just by adding those two cabinas right there to hook it on my belt, I still have full excess to it, but now it's on my side, see? Now I can squat, I can turn, I can whatever, and I could also be carrying a rucksack right now, and this would still be accessible, but would not be in the way. So that carry handle becomes a way to hang it with just a pair of super cheap, you can probably get these for a buck or less at any surplus place. Or order them online or you probably already got a canteen or something that's got them on it. Two clips through your belt, boom, it's a thigh bag right quick. You could, if you were in the field and didn't have this and want to convert it to this, you could simply run your own belt through that loop and then buckle it. You could do it that way if you didn't want to use the Alice clip. And you suddenly have it handy to hook. Now those loops on the back, I can take a piece of cord, run it around my thigh and hook it so it stays attached to my leg and doesn't bounce. It'll stay hooked to my leg as I walk. And so it becomes a thigh bag. Okay, now with this long strap that's so adjustable, I've opened it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the haversack facing me so the back's to you. I'm going to put it around my neck. I'm going to pull my arm through, pull my arm through, making sure that the, the strap does not roll up just like that. Scoot it up and then grabbing the bag, flip it up over my back. Now all I need is a little chest cord right here, and it becomes a knapsack. Yes, I can put a bedroll on the bottom of it. So my haversack, if I'm doing something where I need both hands free, and I need to be unencumbered, I don't need the bag slinging. I can, because it's a long, generous strap, hook it this way and flip it over the back and turn it into a knapsack real easy, with the bedroll attached even. All you need is a cord right here, which you can improvise, to pull a little tension so it doesn't bear down too much on your shoulders and make your arms go numb. Which, this is loose enough, I can do this, see. I'm fine. I could probably walk with the weight that's in here for all day before I really notice it. But that's me. A lot of people are real sensitive, so you want to just run that across. That's it. Now to get out of it, you roll off one shoulder and kind of drop it down the back. That's how you ease out of it. Pretty simple, huh? Now, here is a buck saw blade. I'm just taking tape and going over the edge of it, that's all. You can put plain old masking tape or whatever. Now if I'm going to be hiking in, a buck saw to me is a heavy work saw. I'm not carrying one for just fun, so to speak. I carry a silky saw or a Baco Laplander for a little pruning and a little bushcraft use. If I'm packing in a buck saw blade, we're going into the way back yonder and we're going to do some work. We're building a big shelter, we're whatever. And usually what I'm going to do when that happens is I'm going to buy a blade. I'm going to get me a couple of bolts and wing nuts to take with me to be able to create myself a buck saw. When I get there, it's staying at camp. When we build that big lean-to shelter or whatever it is, it's going to be our hunting base or whatever, I'm leaving this. Now, what have I invested? I've got seven bucks and a saw blade that I'm going to leave in the back country instead of toting it out. Or I can bring it back out. I can just reapply the tape to the edge either way. But it's a simple way for me to transport this and have it available for that. And that's in the strap of the haversack.
the opening for it is down here at the bottom okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strap I'm going to take it and I'm going to start working it in there just like this until it slides all the way up in there just like that now you can easily put it on to the back as you see right there is the tip and right there is the other tip friction of it that little bend will hold it in place I don't have to tie it or hook it in any way it'll stay there and so because of that now all I gotta do is just take it off take the pressure off of it and I can sit there and pull out that buck saw blade I can also put other things in there if they'll fit now in Friday's video I took my squirrel cooker and slid it up in here and if you haven't seen that I'll put the link to that video here that allows me to carry a cooker with me or some other piece of gear that will fit in here how about a file if I ran the file in blade first and put a piece of cord through the uh, hole in the handle I could tie it around right here and keep it from coming out right there'd be a lot of uses of things I could just slide in there flat easy accessible like a file like that some other blade of some kind whatever it's protected in here and keeps it the edges are rolled and sewed so it's got like a thick edge on either side and the pockets a little bigger than what was in my old one so it makes more room if I was going to be carrying this a lot 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 then I would come up with some sort of duct tape or plastic or something sheath to slide the blade into. But for the most part, this ain't going to wear out anything. And the amount of time I'm going to carry it, it will be fine. So that's how I carry the buck saw blade or my squirrel cooker or a file or whatever in the field. It's through that handle right there. And all I got to do when I get there is slide it out. Simple and easy, huh? Okay, now, another use for these loops like you see here I've got a camp craft saw pouch that I'm carrying my silky saw in that all I've done is get a couple of soft shackles and attached it to the bottom through a soft shackle and up here around the main strap so I can put that piece of gear in there another thing that I can do is I can improvise here in the field a couple of sticks come through the outer one come up through that come through the outer one come up through that now lash that together and make a raycroft frame out of this this would easily hook where I can hook and bring my straps under here to go over uh, the ropes or whatever to be my straps to carry it as a backpack and then I would still have a center anchor loop right here and the two outers to push out like that and form the Raycroft frame and put my bedroll so I can build a frame for this for real easy in the field if I've got to carry a larger amount of weight than I want to on my shoulder perhaps I've got hurt or something and I cannot take the load except on both shoulders I can't put it on either arm well therefore I'll do it this way I'll create it where I'll span the weight between two and I'll do that by building a Raycroft frame these holes and pockets allow me to easily and quickly in the field generate a frame for this okay <clears throat> by using the strap up here i put a soft shackle by going through one of those tights at the bottom now i can diagonally put my tomahawk in there my axe my whatever and carry it this way so that it's an easy access right here where i can pull it straight out i can put it back in by simply hooking that soft shackle going back angling it down and bullseye in that handle hole in the back so now I can carry things like small axes tools like that of some kind even a machete if I wanted to diagonal like this and have instant access to it right here where at the same time it's not a burden to carry it this way and it's easy access to pull it out but it's going to ride there because of that now how secure is it well it's as secure as I want it to be if I'm gonna be using this in every five minutes I want it to be quick and easy in and out on the other hand if I'm gonna hook this up and it's gonna to have to stay here I can run my soft shackle around the top and anchor it in place where this like on this this nub this hammer pole would lock and then I have to reach down by thumb pull it loose in order to pull it out so it could have a, a safety so to speak but that would not be an encumberment for me to use this bag and be able to get to it because of that it would be quick and easy access now uh, 
another reason for putting this handle here is for a another usage and what I'm gonna do with it now is I'm gonna remove my soft shackles and everything because this is something that I have planned on it taking everything out of my haversack turn the haversack inside out okay As you can see, all my edges have been sealed tight, okay? This is waterproof. Now I've got that handle is in the inside of the bag, okay? And the bag wants to puck out a little bit. Now it's a water bucket. I can scoop up water and carry a water back to my campsite. Now why would I want to do that? Well... Hey, suppose I want to take a bath, and I do not want to contaminate the water source. I could scoop this up, carry this back up to my camp, dip a rag in and out of this, and bathe myself well away from the water source. That's one. Two, maybe I need to carry water back up there to put out a fire, where it's starting to get a little loose, and I need to get it. I need a bucket. I need water now. This would be a way I could carry a large quantity of water in a fairly quick amount of time. I could get a couple gallons in here. Another thing is, if I take one of my garbage bags and I dig a shallow depression and I lay the garbage bag down in it and I pour the water in it and fill that up, well, that's a sump, we used to call it. And we'd put it next to or close to our fire pit. One, it was quick water to dash your fire started to get away from you. And two, I needed water for washing my pots and pans. That's not drinking water, that's washing water. You see what I'm saying? So I could take and dip, eat my food out of it, fill it full of water, set it right back on the fire, bring it to a boil to sterilize the water and to kill anything left in the plate, wash my plate out with the boiling hot water with a piece of rag stuck on a stick and clean it out so I could keep my pots and pans constantly clean. That way that one and a half, two gallons that I bring up there to that garbage thing would last me a whole weekend of me just cleaning pans. I need to wash my hands real quick, things like that. That frees up my drinking water for me, and this allows me to scoop it up and utilize it. So let me go fill this up full of water for you and show you how that works. Okay, as you can see, once you roll it inside out, the handle becomes up on top because of this pocket. And once it fills with water, it'll be there. I could unzip the other side and get water in there too. But I'm, I'm going to use this bridge a second to show you something. This happens a lot, actually. What if I get to a water source, but I can't get down to the water source easy? The water's right there, but it's 12 foot down or 25 feet down. And there's just no easy way to get down there to it without putting my life and limb at risk trying to do it. Well, I could take a pole and reach down there. I could tie a rope to this and drop it down there with some sort of rock or something in the bottom of it to weight it and make it do. But in this case, I'm gonna demonstrate how you use a pole. I'm gonna run through the handle like that. And I'm gonna stick a big end to help hold it open, go all the way to the bottom. This will allow me to push it below water level. Now I'm gonna use the existing strap to help tie it to it. See? All you gotta do is just come around tight a few times to grip it. Go underneath, come back over the top, and take and tie it off. Just like that. Now when I come up, I'll have water. Now let me step out here on the bridge and I'll dip water. All right, let me take the handle off.
just a little drip. Not bad, huh? There's probably a gallon, gallon and a half in there right now. And it's going to drip just a little bit because it's going to work around the seams. So what? I'm not walking 50 miles. But this would not lose so much that I couldn't make it from my water source back to my camp. And then when I got there, I had plenty of water to pour. Because maybe I'm having to carry this pretty good ways. Maybe I have to get back down in there and it's 200 yards down there. I could easily carry that back, dripping just a little bit, no problem. Let me show you how much water's in it. I hope you can see this. Pretty good bit, huh? Yes, if I unzipped this side, this side will fill water too. But Blackie, your bag's wet. It's waterproof canvas, right? So that means I turn it inside out. Yes, it's wet. I bet you if I shake it off real good and I hang it up in the air and the sun, it'll be dry in a half hour or less and ready for me to go again. It won't be wet all day, all week or nothing. It held water right in front of you. So you know it's going to hold water and it's going to repel water. The surface of it is wet and slick. That's it. But if I put it out here in the sun and the wind in a little bit, or just <laughs> Alabama sun, it'll be dry before I get back to camp. Unzip all this pocket right here. How about in it? How did it do? It's pretty much dry. That was underwater for, what, 20 seconds? being held down and even though there's a gap right there you can stick your finger in it didn't fill full of water so yeah this is a good design guys and right now in this breeze that's blowing it'll easily dry this out in just a few minutes so it's a water carrier and you see how the handle turns to be a perfect bucket handle if both sides were open it'd balance out i'd carry probably a third more water and you saw how much when i went to pour it that lip rolled over and made a perfect little pour spout now didn't it I could pour into canteens, cook pots, whatever. So once I get to camp, I can take the stuff out of my bag and utilize this as a water carrier. It's going to dry. I'm going to be using it for something else. But I love multitasking. And so that's one of the reasons I developed the Blackbird Haversack. Multitask. How many things can I get this bag to do? So that's it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And this bag will be going on sale. As of right now, I'm taking pre-orders for it. The price is going to be $85, the same as the Black Bird 1. I haven't had to go up. I've, a, I've been able to keep it at the price. If it ever gets where I can go down, I'll go down, I promise you. But $85. And that will cover shipping within the United States. So, if you would like one of these Black Bird 2 haversacks, I will list at the end of this video in the description box and right here the website I want you to go to which is down and dirty woodscraft at gmail.com and say I would like a blackbird I will send you the PayPal information and put you on the list for it the manufacturer is already in busy right now making these up for me and it'll be a run of 50 when the 50 is gone I'll do another run later on but I don't know when Right now, as you know, the way the world is, it's hard to do anything. So I wasn't going to be able to do a Blackbird run until uh, May anyway, but we got this opportunity, so we're going to jump at it. So um, the delivery date for these, at this time, what I'm saying is second week of May, okay, because he's manufacturing them right now. As soon as they show up to me, I will mail them off to you. They will be this bag with all these features. I say again, the zipper is going to be on the inside. This prototype has it on the outside. But as you saw, it does leak a tad. 
I took it and I hung it up in field testing. We were having a pretty heavy rain and I just hung it up in the tree outside. And it sat in a driving rain all night long. And the next morning I came out, it had a little bit, not much, like a quarter of a shot glass of water in it leaking around that zipper. But still, it wouldn't do that up under the flap. So I put it back under the flap. Thank you very much for supporting my channel, guys. Thank you very much for everything you do for me. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.